Morning show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Right. I think it would be appropriate for us to begin uh, with a bit about your background. Where have you come from? <laughs> well, HSAPR is a public relations agency. The gamut of services includes of obviously public relations services, uh, strategic communications, crisis and reputation management. Of course, we do the whole gamut. We do government relations. We do political strategy and campaigns as well. Um, but that is, you know, truly the core or the bread and butter of our business. Right. Mm -hmm. But you have a focus on fashion. Right. Tell us a bit, a bit about I that. I know. So last year, as part of our community engagement, just because we have an affinity with fashion and we appreciate just the innovation, the creativity, and just the hard work and the sweat that goes into it, we decided to offer our services to fashion houses. Fashion houses who ordinarily may not be our customers because one, they either can't afford our services or probably don't really see the value in our services. But we wanted to equip them with the tools they needed to tell their story because we believe in the power of storytelling. It is storytelling that connects your audience or your target or, um, audience emotionally to your brand and gets them mm -hmm. to invest in your brand, to purchase from you, and just right. to patronize your services. So we did that for our masterclass where we're telling them stories, where we were teaching them how to come up with, craft their own strategic um, communication document where you identify, first of all, you identify your objective, your ethos as a brand, and then you figure out who your target audience is, and then you curate bespoke messaging to your target audience so that your target audience can patronize your service and buy into your brand as well so this was part of this was the master class that we had and as part of the master class we decided you know what we're gonna have a survey to really figure out what the industry is what the true state of the industry is what mm. the challenges are and how we can put that into a report for someone to pick up and to be able to figure out what the scope and the breadth and the bandwidth and the capacity and what that in industry is doing right why don't we just jump into that survey right. uh, for for a few minutes Got what it. did you discuss so we discovered that it is a booming and thriving industry. It is growing at a rate of 4%, which is great. Um, but, but there are challenges. So there are challenges in terms of technical capacity. Um, people need quality control experts. They need pa patent makers as well. And then there are financial challenges where they're trying to access capital. Um, they're struggling with these banks because, one, beyond the high interest rate, you need collateral of source mm -hmm. to be able to get the capital you need. They're not able to get funding. And if you, at some point, when you're a startup, you want to scale up, you want to expand. So we, we realize that there are those challenges as well and then in terms of policy as well, well they need some breaks you know we realize that they would be interested in some tax breaks some incentives some assistance from government as well so it was a mixed bag of, mm. of, of findings it was a treasure trove of findings and insights right and, and with with all the challenges that you discovered you still think that Ghana uh, or the fashion in Ghana is still a viable investment? Absolutely. The global fashion industry stands at $1.7 trillion. Ghana is currently generating a revenue of $3.11 billion, which is basically 0.183%. And that's just a me meager or barely their slice. And so the goal is for the industry to take a bigger slice of the global pie, a bigger slice of the global cake. And how do we do that? We need structure. We need investment. We need funding. We need um, technical building up technical capacity we need mm. scaling up and that's how we get there because our brands our fashion houses are brilliant they're innovative um, they're delivering they're creative they're in, even interpreting our reinterpreting and reimagining in our, our brands like our, our, our fabrics like kente our woven fabrics mm -hmm. as well so they have the skill set they know that they know they have the know-how they just need the help to get it to the next level right so yeah. are you following up on the on the survey absolutely so 2024 we have a survey out we do and we're encouraging brands to participate because what the goal of the survey we want this document this report to be a one-stop shop for investors we want any investor walking in to say you know what if i read this document one i get the true state of the Ghanaian fashion industry i have a sense of what the needs are i have the sense of what the financial need are what the technical needs are what the collaborative and partnership needs are that is the goal of the survey they're interesting questions 
questions, of course, usually what are the challenges, how long have you been in business, but we even have questions that involve the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. Mm. How can these brands or fashion houses or creatives take advantage of it? You know, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, I think they've done a great job, um, you know, pushing out um, the goal of this um, of this initiative, but I feel like fashion houses have still not understood how they can benefit from it. There's so many benefits for fashion houses when it comes to the African Give continent. Give us a few examples of that. Benefits, so yes. That. So, for instance, you have the inter intellectual property um, regulation under the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, so you know that you're confident that when you're trading, your intellectual property, your innovations, and your designs are protected. Mm. We're talking about market access. Barriers are being removed so that you can can be in Accra, you can design and know that if there's cotton in Benin or somewhere else, I can take advantage of that to finish my creative process. I know that maybe I can go to Rwanda to complete my process as well. So that's how you can take advantage of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. So there's so much there and we ask questions about digital capacity as well, how are they leveraging that, um, how you're leveraging partnership and collaborations that you might be here, there might be different brands in different spaces, but how do we come from our different silos and come together and leverage mm. our, our strengths to create a bigger powerhouse. Right. Yeah. You, you talk about the global stake. Mm. Uh, and I wonder how important it is for Ghanaians, for us in Ghana, um, to benefit from that? I mean, how significant would that be? Right. So, for I mean, I mean, extremely significant. Like I said, it's a $1.7 trillion industry. We have 3.11, which is 0.183% of that slice of the cake. Um, the market is projected by McKinsey, by Euromonitor, by Zipia to grow between 2 to 4%. Ghana is on on, 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 on par to, to grow at 4%, which is great. But beyond that, Ghana is trending. Everyone is interested in coming to Ghana, to visiting Ghana, to experiencing True. Ghana. So why not experience Ghana through our innovation and creativity. So this is really that great time to leverage on this goodwill mm. that Ghana has to push our brands. Right. Well, if you've just joined the conversation, my guest is Hilary Ando. She's founder and chief executive HSA PR, and we're talking about the fashion industry in Ghana. Uh, there was a survey that was carried out last year. There's a follow-up survey. It's important for fashion brands to take advantage of this. Explain to us again why it is important to do this and what would the benefit be to them? So the benefit to the brands is one, we can truly understand what you're going through on a day-to-day. The true state of your business, the true nature, what your true challenges are, because challenges are personal to each brand, what your needs are. So that way, if there's an investor that is looking to invest or to collaborate, they know exactly who to come to. They know how to assist. And and beyond that, at HSAPR, we want to be a bridge for you where we, ha we know what your true needs are. So if someone were to call and say, hey, I'm looking for someone probably who's been in business for 10 years, maybe a men's brand with this kind of aesthetic, who do I reach out to or who do we partner with? And, right. and that is why this is important. And we have other things in store. So we would like for these brands to also engage with us. If you go on our socials, for instance, on Instagram, we are at HSAPR official underscore, also on X, on LinkedIn and on Facebook. And we would like for you to engage with us on our socials. We've shared the link to the survey as well so that you can fully participate in mm. this survey. Right. I was just going to the fact that you know, people shared challenges last year, right. for instance, mm. with you. Is there a way that you can help them, as in your outfit, HSA PR, <laughs> are you able to help overcome some of these challenges, well, for instance? So what we did, so part of the part of the feedback, they truly enjoyed our masterclass. And so part of what we would like to do is to do this, uh, do this masterclass again to assist them. But of course, we can help them. So you need to pray for us so that we can thrive <laughs> as a business because it is a community engagement project. Right. Um, it's just an extension of what we do. And we really would like to help them. So what we, we, we can do or what we intend to do as HSA PR is to bring back this masterclass because storytelling and like I said earlier, it's a powerful power tool. And we did get great feedback about how it helped them increase visibility and mm -hmm. awareness and broaden their scope. And they got a new clientele as well, and which resulted in sales for them and so high turnover. So right. we as a brand were committed to doing that for fashion houses. Mm -hmm. I know you, you. one of the areas that you also highlight is uh, digit, using digital platforms. Right, right. Um, 
talk to us about that. So digital platforms, you know, everyone, when people speak, talk about digital, they think it's something, you know, convoluted. It's really not. The very first digital platform, most of these brands, is their, is their websites. On their websites, you can usually purchase an, an, an item. And then now they're moving to social media. So you have Instagram, then you have TikTok. You have um, digital platform nows like um, Anansi Africa, where you can, you know, patronize these brands. And then we have Canex um, through Afrimexim Bank that are collaborating with fashion houses as well to also create a platform for designers and also like I mentioned earlier the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement so there's so many options now mm -hmm. um, you can have a brand there are brands that don't even have a, a brick and mortar store they're just fully operating digitally as well so there are brands like that as well of course brands that do both in-house and also online as well so it makes back yeah how do we change the the mindset that if i put my designs out there on some digital platform people would just copy my my designs you know I, I i think um i mean of course it's a legitimate fear because this is your innovation but i mean i think fashion is reworked over and over again if we look back at the 60s there are designs that have seeped into the 2024 um so i think be bold anyway put it out there it even happens with ideas you can push out an idea and someone try to try to copy but i feel like um, ideas are divine and um, if it's given to you to execute no one can execute it the way you can so even right. if it's your idea and someone tries to copy it just look at it as flattery and keep going and keep moving and keep refining what you're doing and mm. don't worry about anything else is there another master class coming up soon yes we're fine-tuning the details most likely it will be in may May 2024 we're fine-tuned in terms of location and details as well so like I said if our viewers if our fashion houses engage with us on social media platforms once we have the details we'll communicate it and um, hopefully you'll sign up and participate right yeah. but what is immediate though Hillary is the survey that you the want survey, fashion yes. brands to, yes. to take part in. yes so let's talk about how right so we have a link which is on our socials like i mentioned it's just eight questions and it's a seven minute survey it's timed it won't take much of your time and it's so important that the, the more numbers we have and that is when we will have a true state because mm -hmm. if you have a small group of people it's not representative of the entire industry so we really really need fashion houses we're pleading with you to please participate in our survey it's on our socials please participate so that we can break, be a bridge and we can help you scale up and expand and do well as fashion houses okay so when we say a fashion brand right um what exactly are we talking about um so anyone clothing um any apparel business it can be shoes it can be accessories it can be handbags we have i mean of course we don't want we have a long list of brands so examples could be let's say christy brown or bello edu or gg bespoke or permission or aja bang or sadia nusi there's so many brands out there so many brands or mimi Bois. we have so many brands out there yes all right. Uh, so give us the website again mm. so that people can go and then right. answer the questions. So on our website, if you go to www.hsa-pr.com, there is a link to our survey there. Also on Instagram, HSAPR official underscore. You can find it there as well. And then HSAPR official on X and on Facebook. Mm. Well, but, you know, since you're here, I just want to take advantage. I know that a lot of people come into, into our country um, to visit right. uh, because Ghana is the go-to place, right. especially in December, for instance. Right. What, what, what is it about the fashion industry that will attract people? I think our designs are unique. Our designs are innovative and our designs are unlike no other. So for instance, we get comparisons a lot about maybe the simplicity of our designs. And I think that is the beauty of Ghanaians. There is beauty in simplicity, I believe, and there's mm -hmm. beauty in elegance. And I think people appreciate our simple nature. And I think it translates into our designs as well. You can be put together and elegant and yet muted and there's a beauty in that right so i think people do appreciate that about Ghanaians. can you tell immediately like a Ghanaian design from say a nigerian design um i think there are there are differences and it's quite noticeable in terms of even the hues that we choose um the fabrics that we choose mm. and the 
pared back look of our designs. I think there is a distinct nature right. nature of our designs, even in terms of how we reimagine sometimes our own traditional fabrics. Look mm -hmm. at how we're reimagining kente. Um, if you mm -hmm. look at even how it's translated into our wedding ceremonies, it's, it's, it's very distinct. There's a simplicity, there's a uniqueness about it, a quietness about it. Right. Yeah. And, and just finally from me, I mean, you know the economic climate right, right. now. Is this an area that you think people can still venture into absolutely um food sh um, shelter clothing those are the basic necessities of all and then when you start to make a little bit more even when it comes to food your choices change a little differently the same way with clothing first you just want to clothe yourself then you get a little bit more and you wanted to make a statement about who you are personally and mm. then you start to patronize it so there's always room for more and there's a, there's a seat at the table for everyone because we have diverse tastes so every brand will have its target audience and every brand will have this market right yes well i guess just be confident about what you do absolutely uh, and then you, just before we wrap up any tidbit in terms of how to begin to market it i mean if you're in your little corner and you're you're designing your right. sewing how do you begin to market and it? The most authentic thing I always say, storytelling is powerful. Tell, tell your story about how you started. Um, maybe, hi, m you know, my name is Hillary, and a simple thing. And you can use, I mean, thankfully, we all have gadgets now. You can use a, something as simple as your tool to tell a video. My name is Hillary. I've been an employee of multimedia for 10 years, and I decided finally to pursue my passion whilst I held on to my full-time job. I started by going to Makola to pick up pieces, and I'll pick up beading. And then I decided when I started, I was sewing for family and friends, and they were giving me good feedback. Um, and then I decided to enhance my skills by taking a course somewhere. I did a bit of bead making and embroidery to enhance my skills then I started going back to my co-workers and selling my pieces and when I say storytelling is not crafting lies it is your authentic story right. your story could be that or your story could be you know, I grew up in a home of like a very wealthy household where everyone in my family was a banker or an investor and I wanted to chart my own path. Mm -hmm. So I started sewing, I started this and, you know, at first my parents weren't very receptive of it because I didn't turn out to be a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, but this is the path that I chose and I've been doing this for 10 years and all of a sudden everyone has come around because my business is thriving, I'm progressing and I'm, I'm scaling up. So tell your story as authentic as you possibly can and I'm telling you, your audience will find you you, your right people will connect and it is an emotional thing fashion is emotional you sometimes buy from brands that are a little bit more expensive than the next brand that's giving you something comparable why because you're emotionally connected to that story right yes right well thank you for this master class <laughs> <laughs> it felt my like pleasure. it my really pleasure really appreciate just any final uh, thoughts final words you want to share with our listeners yes so fashion brands keep doing what you're doing we're proud of you you're innovative you're brilliant. We thank you for your contribution to our GDP. 3.11 billion revenue in 2024 projected. And that is impressive. And um, we're here to help you. We're here to be the bridge to connect you to what you need to expand and to scale up. And we look forward to bringing you more master classes and helping you with tools and up tooling and upskilling you to help you better your brand and to, uh, and to do well in what you do. Right. And that's H-S-A-P-R. Yes. So just look out uh, for H-S-A-P-R. We've got the, the questions also on the site yes. when, you, when you visit yes. the website. Yes. All right. Alrighty. Hillary, thank you so much uh, for being on the Super Morning Show. I've enjoyed this conversation thoroughly. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. That's Hillary Andosh, founder and chief executive, H-S-A-P-R.